Safety Council. Good Tuesday morning, Jonesboro. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. It'll be partly to mostly sunny today with temperatures at 35 to 42, a north wind 10 to 15. Partly to mostly clear overnight, that overnight temperature in the mid-20s. 35 to 42 for the high Wednesday with a blend of sun and clouds. Chance of rain and snow Wednesday night into Thursday. And the high Thursday in the low 40s. Jonesboro's community radio station, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. The death toll in California's wildfires has risen to 44, with more than 200 people still unaccounted for. Israeli fighter jets have been pounding Palestinian military targets in Gaza, with at least seven Palestinians killed. Ethiopia is accusing its National Intelligence Service of planning a bomb attack on the country's prime minister in June. And the Italian government says it would be committing economic suicide if it buckled to EU pressure over its budget. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the Voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning everyone and happy Tuesday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. Um, my special guest for today is Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Cricket County Jonesboro Public Library. So we're just, we're just going to catch up on all things library. Um, I shared an event that's happening today. There's a free exercise class. Of course we have. <laughs> did you know now we offer four exercise classes a week? Wow, so I know Zumba and then Mind and Body. Yes, Mind and Body is tonight. That's um, on Tuesday nights from 5.30 until 6.30 right there in the library. We often usually hold it in the round room. Occasionally we'll have another event in the round room where we have to move it. Um, But it's generally in the round room. You... um, Many of the courses require a yoga mat, but if you don't have one, the library has some yoga mats, so there'll be one available if you just want to try it out. Say there's um, something you've been wanting to try, but you haven't signed up for a class at your gym. Maybe you don't have a gym membership. Um, Maybe you've um, just wanted to try something. If you're anything like me, I can check out all the workout DVDs in the world. I'm going to take it home. It's going to sit on the dresser by my bed. It's not going to go anywhere because I have to have other people. I've done done a yoga because if you are, if you do like to do it on your own, we have a lot of workout DVDs you can okay. check out. And there's some really fun ones. There's some Dancing with the Stars themed oh, wow. workout DVDs. There's yoga. There's Pilates. There's different things. But I'm not going to do it by myself at my house. So if you're like me and you like to have other people around you, if you just need that encouragement, The library is a great place to come and take a class because it's always free. On Tuesdays, we have Mind and Body. On Thursdays at noon, we offer a half-hour yoga class starting at 12.15. So it's just a low impact, just designed to get you moving on your lunch break. I'm sure many people that have stressful jobs. Maybe you need that. that (laughs) Um, And then on Thursdays at 5.30, we have Zumba Fitness, which is a Latin music-based inspired dance fitness class which i am not coordinated (laughs) enough i trip over carpet so i can't take that class um i've tried um and then on on saturdays we have a new class starting at 10 a.m on saturdays we've done it for a couple of months now it's tai chi which so it's been great it's been a very well attended class but you know like all of our classes we could always use more people okay so tai chi is a um martial art but it is both use of using your body and like slow methodical movements but it's also great for balance and it's also a great meditation time um they say it's great for older folks but it's good for anyone you know it's not a lot of high stress on your joints it's actually really good for your joints and movement All of our classes are taught by licensed, trained professionals, so that's just an added bonus if you come and take a free class at the library. Okay, and you can find all this information at libraryinjonesboro.org or 
to Cricket County Jonesboro Public Library Facebook page. You can. So if you're on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash ccjpl. We have a main page, which is that. We also have a children's page. You can just type in ccjpl children's library or children's library. And if you live in our area, of course, it will start to pull it up. We also have a um, Craig County Jonesboro Public Library adult page. So um, those are the different places you can find. You can find all of our events on our website, librarianjonesboro.org. And I also have created events on the main Facebook page. So if you're interested in coming to one of our exercise classes, you can mark interested or going. We'd love for you to go. And then, you know, how Facebook does it will remind you that that event is coming up. And I'll tell you, I need a reminder a lot of times. I don't even know what day it is sometimes. So those are our exercise classes, and those are open for adults 18 and up. We also have other adult adult programs. Um, This month, we're going to be offering our monthly bingo tomorrow, the 14th at 10 a.m., we also are partnering to offer um, a program on Wednesday, the 14th, tomorrow, um, on Alzheimer's. We're partnering with the Ooh. Alzheimer's Association okay. to offer a program on communication. Okay. So in many cases, of course, when you have someone suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's, there's a lot of confusion. Yes, Not able to um, remember um, even your own relatives Mm -hmm. so the library is partnering with the alzheimer's association to offer this program Um, there's a lot of information on um, our website on our facebook page um, but um, it is at noon tomorrow i believe i'm I'm looking up the event right now Um, but we're offering this program um, as just a way here it is a way to um to provide that that information because a lot of times people don't know what to do they don't know who to turn to and this is just going to be um, a great informational um, event I'll have it in just a hot minute you can if you're on your mobile device you can go to the Craig K County Jonesboro Public Library and there's a little bar across the top that says um, about photos reviews videos and there's another um, thing called events You can go over to events, and that is where um, you will see the different things happening at the library. The program is called Effective Communication Strategies, and it's going to be held from 12 until 1.30 tomorrow at the library. It's free to attend. Um, What the um, little blurb says is communication is more than just talking and listening. It's also about sending and receiving messages through attitude, tone of voice, facial facial expressions, and body language. As people with Alzheimer's disease and other dementias progress in their journey, the ability to use words is lost. And so that's just um, a little bit about that program. And if you have a family member who is suffering from dementia, maybe you even have a friend who has a family member and you're a Available tomorrow and you know that they aren't you could always come and listen for them and then share the information yes, you can never go wrong with it with having information That's right. so we have that event coming up we also will have later in the month we'll have our adult coloring club which okay. you know if you're looking for something fun to do that is out of the cold um, it's usually held the last Wednesday of the month so we will be closed on Thursday and Friday of next week for Thanksgiving and the day after Thanksgiving. So anyone out there who um, has plans to come to the library, just know that we will not be there on um, Thursday of Thanksgiving. We'll be home with our families and the Friday after Thanksgiving. So um, we do offer um, some special programs for children after school. And next week we will be... um, having a slight adjustment to that schedule on monday we're going to offer thanksgiving week building they're going to be building using um, cardboard boxes and and just creating things that will be taking place on monday the 19th at 10 and then also on monday at 4 we'll have our weekly legos we always play legos on um, monday night so that's something i'm going to just Um, intertwine it while I'm talking about Thanksgiving events we have after school activities um, every week next week they will be a little altered this week they are as normal Um, we have 
yesterday we played Legos. Today we have our STEAM events. Some people call it STEM, some call it STEAM, science, technology, engineering, and math, or as we say at the library, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, we do various things on Tuesdays that are part of the STEAM slash STEM curriculum. Okay. We have little robots called Ozobots that are about the size of a quarter and about an inch tall that um, have little wheels on the bottom and children can use markers of specific colors and specific patterns and we have a pattern sheet they can look at okay. where they're basically learning coding. Okay. They're putting a code down on the paper that this robot will follow and it will do what the code says. It will speed up. It will turn and spin like a tornado. It will go slow like a snail. There are different things you can tell these robots to do. And what these children are doing is they're learning coding. Without even realizing. Without even realizing it, exactly. Right. So on um, Tuesdays we have STEAM slash STEM programs. On Thursdays we do, or t <laughs> what day am I? On Wednesdays we color. <laughs> On Thursdays, we have a special program each month. This month is all about drama. And on Fridays, we have fun and games. So next week, we will, as I said, have building at 10 a.m. on Monday, which you can find all of this on our calendar online and on Facebook. We'll do our Legos on Monday as normal. On Tuesday morning, the 20th at 10, we're going to have children's bingo. And children's bingo is one of the most entertaining things <laughs> because a lot of times they play sound bingo where they'll have the sound of a fire truck siren. Wow. And then kids will find the fire truck on their bingo okay. card. Or the sound of a dog barking. And so the kid will find a, the dog okay. on their bingo card. So it's a lot of fun. Um, and then on we'll have our an weekly STEAM program okay. on Tuesday afternoon at 4. And then we're going to do on Wednesday, we're going to do um, fam a family movie and coloring. Um, at 10 and at, I believe, earlier in the afternoon is when the other one is going to be. Let me look really quickly. Yes, okay. 2 o'clock. Instead of 4, that'll be, that event will be at 2. Okay. So, um, we say family movie. If you look on our um, website or if you look at our Facebook calendar, it doesn't say a title, you'll notice. Okay. Anyone who's interested in learning the title can call the library at 935-5133 and speak to someone in the children's library, our licensing doesn't allow us to announce the title. What's that number again? 935-5133. Okay. And then just follow the prompts um, to get you to the children's library, and then they can help you there. All right. I want to say good morning to Detective Nathan Coleman. Uh, thank you for checking in, Mr. Roy Davis. Um, Detective Coleman says, my kids used to love going to story time and seeing the train in the children's area. <laughs> that train is still up and running, and it is one of our most popular attractions. We also have a wooden fire truck that the kids can climb around in, and they love getting in there. And Because, you know, they're not old enough to be behind the real wheel yet, so they can pretend to drive. Okay. So there's a lot of fun things to do at the library. Always. I don't think people really understand. It's not just... You know, maybe in the olden days, it was just go to the library, check out a book, maybe a table or so. Now it's so much more interactive and there's so much for the whole family to do. We not only offer programs for all ages, but we do still have those old standards. We have books, we have fiction, we have nonfiction, we have magazines. We have subscriptions to so many magazines. You can just stop by the library and you can check out a magazine. Okay. You can take it home with you and read it. You can stay at the library and read it. We have um, seven new study rooms in addition to the four we already had. So as finals approach and you're looking for somewhere quiet to study, and we all know that from, at least from my days as a student a, a long time ago um, at ASU, those study rooms in the library fill up quickly. And so if you're looking for somewhere to study, we have private study areas at the library. We, we have doors that close. They all have plugins inside. You can bring your laptop. We have free Wi-Fi throughout the building. Um, it's aptly named library. <laughs> so you can come and, and use our building. If you have a group that you're in a class where you have to have a group or maybe you study better with a group, you can borrow our meeting spaces. Or if you're a company 
who needs to use a meeting space. Maybe you're trying to hire some new employees and you need a place where you can have private meetings. You can use our meeting spaces for free. You just have to book the room first. Okay. So you can call Jordan Wilson, 935 5133. She is our assistant business manager. She books our round room, our civic league room, which is a small conference room, and the Shakespeare room because okay. we have new rooms we added oh. after authors. Okay. Um, you can book the William Shakespeare room, which holds about 15 people um, to do those with. It's free to book any of our meeting spaces, but those do are used by booking only because okay. we use them for library programs other individuals in the community book them to use them for their programs okay. we do not allow anyone to use any of our rooms for if they're selling anything okay. or um for any type of party okay they're just strictly for meetings okay and so if someone or some type of social not okay i don't want to say this Social as in fellowshipping? Yes. But not music and parties. Right. <laughs> like um, occasionally party. we'll have requests for birthday parties or oh. baby showers and things like that. And we don't allow that. Okay. But um, we have various groups who will get together um, to have like semi-annual or quarterly fellowship gatherings. Okay. If that's like, I don't, I don't even have a great... But you could always call Miss Jordan, and she will tell you if your group or organization or event qualifies. Okay. Because we do have rules that we follow. Now, is there a way someone can, I don't want to say apply, register, reserve? Everything's online. done by phone, or okay. or you can call and ask and get her email address. Okay. But we don't have an online booking system. Okay. Um, do you think there's something that may come in the future? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure um, that we've discussed it, but I'm not I don't okay. know if that will um, come to pass. Okay. Um, and also getting a library card. Um, you can you, you you have to come to either one of the events that you see me in my pretty white tent. This is public <laughs> library at, or you can come into our building. Um, getting a library card is easy it and is. free. It takes about two minutes if there's not a line. Um, but all you need is a photo ID along with your current mailing address so okay. if your driver's license shows your current mailing address you're good to go but say you recently moved or um you just haven't changed your um current mailing address on okay. your driver's license you must live in um, craighead or poinsett counties to qualify for a library card here in the craighead county jonesboro public library um and if you don't have your current mailing address just bring in a piece of mail say you recently moved and you have a lease or okay. anything that shows your current mailing address okay. um, that will work for us to get you a library card and your library card offers you access to 20 checkouts a month four of those can be DVDs um, Four, in addition to your 20 physical items you also can get four digital items I will tell you right now there are many people who never step foot into the physical building mm -hmm. they check out only digital materials and that is absolutely fine we understand life gets busy you i see you have overdrive <laughs> libby pulled up right now um i have um two or three books checked out right now um so um you could check out four items at a time you can also return them what i love about libby for listeners out there libby is the app you can use to download digital materials like ebooks and audiobooks um, Libby keeps a record of what you have checked out, which has helped me so extraordinarily when people are talking to me when I'm at a booth, which the um, public relations department, myself and many others, have done 29 booths in 2018, um, where you would have seen us somewhere uh, talking to you about the library. Oh, so that's more than we've done in the past. Um, and at those locations we do library card signups but um we with libby i will often have a parent or an individual approach me and talk to me about books tell me that their child doesn't love to read or this is what they like to read and i can look at my past checkouts okay. and give them say well i've read these but okay. often when i put on the spot i can't remember yeah. the titles so i love libby that it allows you to look at what you've checked out in the past. Okay. 
um, the old OverDrive app. So anyone out there who still uses OverDrive, we request that you download the new app. It's called Libby, L-I-B-B-Y. It's kind of a burgundy-ish purpley color. Little girl with and a it's book. got a little girl holding a book. <laughs> the reason is OverDrive is the old app. Okay. OverDrive is the name of the company, oh, okay. like the umbrella company. And then Libby is a branch of it. Okay. But OverDrive is the name of the old app. And they are no longer updating that app at all. So okay. when something breaks on it or goes wrong on it, they're just not fixing it. Okay. Because they want everyone to switch over to Libby. Okay. So I just, I, I like to use different platforms to let people know, please use Libby. Okay. And it's great. It's awesome. Because what's great about downloading books is many times, many times, <laughs> they go back before I'm finished with them. And I'm like, hey, where'd you go? But someone else is on hold for it. And so it goes to the next person in line after your two-week checkout period. Okay. And so what's great about Libby is that when you re-download it, it picks up where you left off. So if you don't remember what chapter you were on, you have no idea. Don't worry about it. When you download Libby, when you download that book again, Libby's going to remember. She's smart. Okay. She reads a lot. All right. Excuse me. I want to say good morning to Dr. Lily Fears. She says, I love the library. Probably need to update my card. Well, you know what you have to do? If you can't stop in the library, did you know you can call? Many people don't know that. Okay. So you can call us, 935-5133. Speak to someone in the circulation department. They'll verify your information okay. and make sure that, you know, this is still where you live and this is still your phone number. And they'll update it for you online. Many people don't realize that your library card expires every year. Oh. From the date that you get the card um, to the following year or from the date that you renew that card. So say you're a couple late months late with renewing it. Mm -hmm. It will renew a year from the date you renew it. Wow. I need to check and check. I think I need to update some information on mine as well. First, we tune in to Community Conversations on KLAK 102.5 FM. We're speaking with Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Cricket County Jonesville Public Library. And we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Dads, do you know how to color outside the lines? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Society has standards for what fatherhood should look like, but each father has unique strengths that make for unique parenting. So here are three ways dads can color outside the lines. First, consider whose lines you're trying to color in. Ask yourself, am I making decisions to impress others or am I making decisions that are best for my family? Second, determine what success looks like for your family. Make a list of what's most important and pursue it. Finally, rewrite your story. If you just been drifting along, start a new chapter for your family life. Be intentional about being the best dad you can be. Be bold, be creative, and remember, your family first. Want to keep up with Mark off the air? You can. Follow him on Twitter, twitter.com slash Mark Merrill. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A-1908. Com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Starks Auto Plaza at 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard is a proud KLEK supporter, offering luxury pre owned vehicles sold wholesale to the public. At Starks, we never say no. 870 203 99 Details at StarksAutoPlaza.com. The Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was established on June 28, 1997 by 13 dynamic women who accepted the challenge of chartering the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter. Today, the chapter continues to impact the Jonesboro community by sponsoring programs such as the Sonia D. Williams Scholarship Breakfast, Community Back to School Bash, Delta Academy, Voter Registration Drive, and Autism Awareness. 
Our focus correlates with the national theme, joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. Our chapter supports Delta's five-point programmatic thrust, economic development, educational development, international awareness and involvement, physical and mental health, and political awareness and involvement. More information about the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated is available at www.jonesboroalumnidst.org or via email jonesboroalumni at live.com. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup delivery and more with the motto of anything mean we can clean. Details at 870-273-273. 5187 House of Details on Facebook and at KLEKFM.org. We at KLEK would like to extend a sincere thank you to all of our underwriters and sponsors. If you would like to sponsor or underwrite our programming and help us to educate, entertain, and empower the community. Our number is 870-203-9951. Our email address is klek1025fm at gmail.com. The website address is klekfm.org. Again, thank you for listening. Now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Again, we're speaking with Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library, talking about all things library. So again, you can go to library in Jonesboro. Dot org and you can look at all of their um, events that are coming up and just some other information that's posted there. All of the services they offer are listed there. There's several tabs, departments, research, e-media. So you can spend hours just kind of browsing just the website. And I know Christmas is, you know, we're not there yet, but yeah. um, December, I just want to go ahead and so people can plan. Okay. Um, did you guys know Santa's coming to town? I mean, he's a pretty big deal. <laughs> um, in no, in not November, in December on the twelfth, um, will be our annual story time with Santa. Um, that will be held at ten o'clock in the morning. We'll have um, Santa will arrive um, with his reindeer and all the jingle bells and joy, which I I love when Santa comes to town. It's so much fun um, because our children's staff dresses like elves and reindeer, oh, wow. and sometimes there's, there's a Christmas tree. Um, but it's so much fun for us and for the kids and so santa arrives and reads twas the night before christmas but we do songs and little dance things because we have to you know release the magical christmas spirit before santa comes um it's a great fun for the entire family um this is for um any children who aren't in school okay because it's a wednesday at 10 a.m. in the morning. So if you have school-age children who are in school, of course, you know, that's where they'll be. But so we have primarily toddlers up, up to school-age children okay. who come. But after story time, the library provides free photos with Santa, okay. which is a great value, of course, but it's important, especially for those um, in our community, one who want to bring their kids to see Santa, and maybe you can't afford to take your child to see Santa in any other location. Okay. Now, what day? Because it's not on the calendar yet. It's not yet. Okay. Um, but it's um, the it's always the second Wednesday. The second Wednesday. Okay. Um, of the of December. So, um, I haven't officially been given that date yet, but okay. that's when it always says. I just wanted to go ahead and throw it out there. Okay. In case I'm not able to come 
to see you prior to um, to Santa Claus coming to okay. town. Um, the library will also be, um, so if you guys are attending parades in either Brooklyn or Jonesboro, the library will be in those Christmas parades coming up. So um, a lot of fun things um, on the horizon um, for our December. Um, speaking still of this month though, we do have several events that you can come to in addition to um, our children's after school events we also have story time, which I, I can't encourage enough bringing your tiny humans to story time at the library because story time is more than just reading to your child. Mm -hmm. In our family story times, the kids get to spend time with other kids their own age. Maybe you have other children who your child associates with, um, but this is a, a place for them to learn sharing with others they're not related to. It's also a great place for you to interact with other parents um, that have children about the same age as you do. Because, you know, maybe you've been a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad or a, a grandparent who stays with the children and you don't really know a lot of other people who have kids around that same age. And so, story time, I think, is great for the whole family because the parents get something out of it, the children get something out of it, um, and you also, maybe, this is your first baby. <laughs> and you have a you have a little one. You know, we have baby story time called Laps at Story Time on Thursdays and Fridays. If this is maybe your first child and you're still learning, you know, you're still learning. Um, I'm just a fur mom, you know. <laughs> I've got a fur baby. Um, and you're still, you're learning. It's a great way to connect with other parents okay. or grandparents. And you know, maybe you don't have family who lives co close by who, if there's an emergency, mm -hmm. maybe you would meet that person That's right. and become friends with that person. Um, it also will teach you how, how to read your baby, okay. you know, how to um, educate your child because when they're, we're always learning things. Yes, ma'am. I learn things all the time and they're little sponges <laughs> when they're that age. And so if you're, if you're able to learn not only a way to read but interact with the story mm -hmm. as you're doing so it's so much fun to go to laps at story time they do a lot of what are called finger plays and you know for the people watching it's like itsy bitsy spider okay you know because your child's watching and they're they're learning movement um so much about laps at story time is halfway through they dump out a bucket of toys yeah. and that is not only about sharing and playing but it's about dexterity they're picking stuff up they're climbing over things they're learning how to navigate wow. around the world so so much comes out of story time these are offered on mondays at 6 p.m or only evening story time mondays at 6 at 10 a.m. the rest of the week. So on Tuesdays and Wednesdays is family for all ages, family story time. Okay. And then our lap sit story time for those up to two years old is on Thursdays and Fridays at 10. Okay. I want people to really understand um, how important literacy is. Literacy is not, like you said, it's not just about reading. It's about engaging. It's about helping your child develop those skills that teachers will greatly appreciate when they come to their classroom whether it's pre-k or kindergarten above right it's very important to instill that to plant those seeds into your child early um it helps with their verbal skills along the way the more they hear words the more they're able to pronounce enunciate you know well and they hear different people saying the same words and so they get to hear them in different ways mm -hmm. we draw words out differently the way we say them or maybe we pronounce it slower or faster or in a different way that they might better comprehend and better remember yes. so we talked about children's programs which are awesome and some of my favorites i'm not going to choose favorites so they're all my favorites <laughs> We also have a program for our older children. Okay. So, you know, they get to be about fourth grade, and they're not little kids anymore. No. Um, so we call them tweens, and we offer a lot of um, summer tween programming, but we have a new book club oh. um, that meets the first Saturday of every month at 2 p.m. in the Shakespeare Room, and it's called the Tween Book Club. So it's for those who are currently in the fourth through sixth grades, will be reading age-appropriate juvenile fiction, um, and they can pick up a book in the children's library anytime 
between the first Saturday of each month. Okay. And then on the first Saturday of December, we will have our tween book club. I believe that might be December 1st. Let me look really quickly. Um, but you can come anytime now and go ahead and pick up a copy. I'm not sure what the book is. Yes, December 1st is okay. Tween Book Club. So you can come by the library and pick up a copy of whatever the book is that they're discussing now. And they'll hand out another copy on December 1st that they will read between that time and January 1st. Which, we won't be there January 1st, so okay. you get a reprieve until <laughs> they have the next one. I just thought of something as you were talking. Um, I heard someone mention some social media site that they learn even from nonfiction books they learn life lessons oh my gosh so many times and so with children in that age gap in that age group it's a good time to start discussions about life in general just things they relate things that are on their level um, and we have a lot of great nonfiction books conversation starters um, in both our children's library and in our young adult library wow. so many of the questions that people have or things going on in their lives. Miss Jessica, because I want to talk about teens really quick, so okay, this yes. is a great um, way to do so. Uh, Miss Jessica is our teen librarian. She is wonderful. Okay. We're actually working on a new project. Okay. So we are, I don't know if you've ever heard of genrefication. Mm -hmm. it's, a fun, it's a fun new word to say, but you know how there are different types of, non, of fiction that we all like to read. Mm -hmm. Some of us like to read horror books not me don't sign me up for that some of us like to read historical fiction some like to read romance some like to read dystopian fiction like the hunger games and okay. books like that we are genrefying our teen library so we will have a section where all the romance books are located within the teen library we're going to have a section where all the not the historical fiction is located we're going to have a section where all the horror fiction is located okay. all the dystopian fiction these different it's broken i think she said she's done 11 i may be wrong about that but she's done maybe 11 or 12 categories okay. and now she's working on placing those books putting new stickers on okay. them to put them in what those different categories are going to be so what they've learned this has been done in many high school libraries because in high school you know students they don't have like a whole period where they can go in and go to the library unless they have like a a free study yeah. period where they're in study hall and they can get you know go to the library but in many cases they're going in between classes and they, need to get in. they have seen <laughs> when they have genrefied their collection they have seen a huge spike in checkouts because okay. a that would, it's going to be great for me as an adult because I can go and I can just skip that horror section and walk right on by. <laughs> but I can go and, and look at suspense fiction. Okay. You know, or I can look at, at historical fiction. I can know what I'm looking for. Okay. Because I lead the Young Adult Book Club at the Craighead County Jonesboro Public Library. If you like to read young, young adult fiction, we'll be meeting today at 6 o'clock okay. in the Civic League room. I made hot spice tea, and we're going to drink that. Okay. Um, but we're, we're reviewing A Thousand Pieces of You. It's a great book about um, dimension travel, inner dimension. They're jumping between dimensions. Not time travel, where they're changing times. They're going sideways instead of... It's really a good book, I, I promise. I won't lie to you. Um, but say, I want to read a book about something like that. Okay. I can go directly, because in, in our book clubs, we or at least in the young adult one, I don't want to read just historical young adult fiction. Okay. You know, we want to go historical fiction. We want to go um, realistic fiction. We want to go, we, we go different things to, so that we're not always reading the same things. And I like to do that with my own life. Um, but our young adults, um, they have their book club always on the third Saturday of every month. Okay. And so they are going to be meeting um, on the 17th. So Young Adult Book Club will meet on this Saturday. Hey, look at that. <laughs> on the 17th at 2 o'clock. We have Young Adult Gaming Club that meets right afterwards at 3 p.m. We also have a program that we started a few months ago called Brush and Pen. It focuses on writing and art. And for the month of November, we are focusing on NaNoWriMo. And if you've never heard of NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month. Mm -hmm. So it's a month every year where it's uh, NaNo, so National Novel 
yeah, Na- National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo. So if you go on Twitter or um, Tumblr or um, Instagram, you'll see the hashtag N A N O W R I M O, NaNoWriMo. It's National Novel Writing Month. And so for this brush and pen, we are focusing on National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo. Um, and that is um, going to be held on the first and third of every month. And so they'll be meeting this Thursday at um, 530 in the Civic League Room. And you'll do some sort of art or writing project. Um, primarily, again, this month it'll be writing because National Novel no- <laughs> Writing Month. Um But Brush and Pen will also be held um, in December on the 6th and the 20th if you can't make it this month. Um, You will not see December events on our online calendar yet because I have not been given them yet. But as soon as um, I know what they are, you will know what they are. Um, That should happen the next couple of weeks. Um, Our teens have a great area that is just for them so if you're a teen or if you have a teen and you know maybe they don't want to come hang out in our teen section because they think maybe there'll be kids in this teen section or there'll be adults (laughs) hanging out there there will not be so we have um a teen computer area that is just for those 13 to 17 we have um a little um on a little cave i guess you could say a little um enclosure sort of okay where they can go and sit there's a bench they can go and sit. Um, we also have some um, cushy, like a little couch and some different chairs uh-huh. um, where they can come and hang out because we want them it to be a, like a, a nice, good, safe place for them. That's awesome. Um, and Miss Jessica, our teen librarian, does a lot of wonderful things. Um, she's always trying to come up with um, things that they want to do. And oftentimes, she'll have um, take-home crafts at her desk where you can stop. And if she has something that there, she has a little... Um, poster that will say take one home and she'll have one if that's out then that means that teens can okay. take one home um, we just want to do everything we can to um, offer a space for people okay. and also in addition to what your kiddos want to read for fun I was that kid who would sometimes wait until like the day before a paper was due and of course the book <laughs> I needed to read um, was not in the library because it was already checked out by someone else. We have a collection of um, several books that are required reading for high school students okay. that um, it's in a special section of required reading that you can stop by the library and I can't guarantee that a copy of one of those books will be there but The Catcher on the Rye um many of those classics that are required reading that often i remember having to read and then write yes. sort of a book report slash you know paper what did you get out of this not just what was it about but more what did it mean and what did you get out of it man it's yeah. been 20 years but i still remember i have nightmares sometimes um but um we do have those and i, I like to let parents and grandparents and friends of family know Hey, if, if you have a panicking teenager who didn't can't get the book that they need, I know you can download copies of these things now, but if you need a physical copy, stop by and we'll help you out in any way we can. That's awesome. I would love to see um, more interaction with the teens, young adults, I should say. Um, we always talk about, you know, adults coming together, adults fellowshipping, but teens and tweens, they need that interaction as well. And... You just never know how much of a different person, I'm not going to say better, a different person they can become as they get older if they connect with someone that has, that shares their same or similar likes and interests. It's so neat to see these teenagers come together because we have so many school districts in this town that, and and, and kids that come from other towns as well, you know, they'll come from Brooklyn or they'll come from our surrounding area. And it's so interesting to see these friendships that are formed at the library and then to find out that, well, this kid goes to Westside and this one goes, you know, to Jonesboro. So they don't even go to school together, okay. but they met at the library and formed these great bonds and friendships that they otherwise, you know, I know we live in the same town, but teenagers spend so much of their time in at their school, yeah. you know, and in their own friend groups that they form at school. And so it's, it's such a joy to see these friendships being formed even with our kiddos who are little, they form these friendships when they're kids, when they're toddlers, when they're young children at the library, and they maintain those friendships when, say, you know, our school districts are so close together. Yes. So maybe you live 
a couple blocks from each other, but you're in different school districts. So you're not going to the same yeah. school, but you still are friends with each other because you met at the library. That's awesome. Because you have a parent <laughs> or a grandparent who had the time. We totally understand that not everyone has time, but it's not really a secret, but I've got some special news to share with you. Okay. We ahead. are getting a bookmobile. Yay. In the spring, we will be adding a bookmobile to our um, library. And we understand that there are many families. Maybe you have a mom and a dad who, maybe they don't just work one job. Maybe they work two jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you have a disabled parent or some way that you just can't come to the library. You're, you can't get your child. You want to bring your child or grandchild to the library, but you just don't have the time or you can't make it to us. We are going to be coming to you. That's awesome. We are working on the route. I know we won't be able to, of course, go to every single place yes. but we are working on I say we meaning <laughs> the they library. the library <laughs> are working on the routes that they will go on and um, the places that they will go um, to go to neighborhoods to go to communities in our in our area in our coverage area to provide these services for those who can't come to us and that's what we do and with many of our outreach, with me doing wherever you see me and uh, Miss LaTanya or the different people who come with me. It's usually Miss LaTanya, okay. our circulation manager. She is wonderful, and she comes with me to so many events. Of those 29, <laughs> she has probably been to 26 of those. Oh, wow. So um, we, when you see us out in the community at our library tent, we always bring a craft for your kiddos to do because we do crafts and story time, and not all children get to – come to story time we understand we hold four of the five story times during the day uh -huh. and most of us are at work yes. during the day and you can't bring the kiddos um so we um are out in the community in many places doing a craft we will sign you up for a library card on the spot if you have the adequate um information to get that card to you and we we like to make ourselves available I know, I've seen you all. Um, you came to our Juneteenth event. And I'm ready for next year. Um, you went to another back-to-school. You probably hit up every back-to-school event. We just every like to um, put ourselves out there as a as an opportunity for people. Yeah, so, and just want to remind everyone, everything at the library is free. Like, you can't beat that. So, please take advantage of what the library has to offer. But we're going to get ready for another a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk about ways how you can actually support the library. Because everything is free. The library is nonprofit. But there are still ways that you can give back and feel good about doing it. So, we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Let's be honest. Infomercials are captivating. However, despite the risk-free promises and the buy now, get a second one free pitches, the products sold by infomercial companies don't always live up to the hype. To help avoid problems with purchasing products advertised through infomercials, the Better Business Bureau recommends that you take these steps. Avoid being caught up in an urgent sales pitch. Take your time to consider the purchase. Research the company and product. Go to bbb.org to obtain the business review on the company and check its BBB rating. The Better Business Bureau also recommends buyers immediately notify sellers if items are disappointing, damaged, or do not arrive as anticipated. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money. 
Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation foundation at gmail.com. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Support for KLEK is brought to you by... Several years ago, a school bus technician came into the parts department and said, I need a school bus radiator as fast as I can get it. Our parts man had the radiator sent to Kennett, Missouri on the first bus coming out of Memphis. He told Alan, the bus technician, to call him as soon as he picked the radiator up. At 3 o'clock in the morning, he called our parts man and said, I just picked the radiator up. You told me to call you. Glenn Sane, and God bless our troops. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to KLEKFM.org for more information. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, welcome back to the last segment of Community Conversations on KLEK. 102.5 102.5 of him. We're speaking with Miss Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. And so we're going to wrap up the segment with any final events information and also talk about how you, the community, can give back to the library because everything is free. The library is a nonprofit organization, but they still need some help along the way. So we're going to talk about Friends of the Library, anything, any other information Miss Brandy um, had mentioned yet. So if you've ever been to the library, which I hope many of you have, if you (laughs) haven't, we would love for you to visit us at 315 West Oak Avenue. But we do have a Friends of the Library, which is a nonprofit organization that's separate from the library. They're within our, um, they have a a space within our building. They um, have a bookshop in the back. So if you've ever been to the library and you've used our one collection that never gets weeded, our genealogy collection, or if you've used our computers um, towards the south side of the building, the extreme south side of the building okay. is where our genealogy collection resides. It's also where you will find our microfilm machines. Okay. If you go past that to the far right-hand corner is the Friends of the Library bookshop. Now, in addition to the books they have within the shop, there's also some carts um, right outside the shop okay. um, that have books on them. So there is a great supply of gently used um, fiction and nonfiction books. We also have a few audio books as well as um, they have some DVDs. Many times um, they have our discarded materials, things that they're still good. They're just a little bit um, extra loved. You know, okay. they've been they've been used a lot and so we'll discard them. Any donations made to the Friends of the Library um, go to that bookshop. And, and the prices are very reasonable. Very reasonable. So I often, 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 I buy a lot of magazines back there because the magazines are 10 cents a piece. 
And that'd be great for someone who has a project for school. Thing. Exactly. I like to read them. <laughs> and so I'll go back and I'll get things like, you know, people donate a, a myriad of different things. But I like to read the Martha Stewart Living oh. magazines. I don't have a subscription to that one. <laughs> but there's all sorts of, um, especially this time of year, there's a, all the time. There's Cooking Light back there. Oh. There's Better Homes and Gardens, Southern Living. And I could, I can't promise you, but in many cases, there are some great pie recipes or ham recipes and this time of year a lot of us we're looking for for new recipes for our family thanksgiving or christmas meals um and at 10 cents a magazine you cannot beat that um Compared and to what like 10 to 15 dollars on a rack and in many cases i will go and purchase um maybe there's a book that i, I find that i've been wanting to read that like one of the ones i bought um a few years ago was Jurassic Park. Okay. I had never read that book. And so I checked I bought I checked it out. Instead of checking it out, which I encourage checking out, I think I paid a dollar for it. Wow. And I took this this book home. And there are many books that I've done that way. Um the friends of the library accept donations and we can provide you with a tax receipt okay. um showing that you have made this donation to a nonprofit organization and um use it on your taxes if you wish um but we take those donations and we put them in the bookshop and then when you purchase those materials that money comes back into the library and it the friends of the library do many wonderful things for instance coming up they will have a holiday open house in december um that's sort of a thank you to the community they also, anytime we have the young adult author visit mm -hmm. that happens in October, the Friends of the Library purchase books that go okay. to those high school students to read that they get to keep. They get that book prior to the visit. They read that book, and then that's the book that the person will sign and personalize, like say, Dear Brandy, you know, thanks for reading or whatever and sign their name. So in addition to that, they also help support our Summer Reading Club program you know when your child comes and they get to pick out a book to take home and a book that will have their name put in it that's thanks to the friends of the library you'll also notice the friends of the library on the back of the t-shirts that the kids get to take home with them that's because they're one of our sponsors of our summer reading club they do so much throughout the year to help out um with our library programming and um it's thanks to them that they were able to do many of the things that we're able to do. So if for many times for Christmas, people will make a donation in someone's name. Okay. If you're looking to make a donation in someone's name, um, we also have, in addition to the friends of the library, um, you can uh, make a donation to the library oh. in the name of someone. Okay. And it, like we do honorees and we'll have honor books. Um, in our collection. So every now and then you'll check out a book that will say this was donated in honor of. And so that's just another avenue that you can take with the library. That is very awesome. And I want to give a shout out to the board members real quick. Uh, Todd Williams, president, Dr. Marty Shaw, vice president, Molly Beaverstock, treasurer, Kyle Windermi Windmeyer, uh, Secretary Rachel Jones, Jessica Foster, Rebecca Mixon, Leslie Williams, Emily Bowes. So if you know any of those people, tell them thank you for what they do for the Craig County or the public library in general. So thank you. And I know that Friends of the Library is a national thing. Um, I was looking up some information for another state to mm -hmm. help someone else. And there's a chapter, I guess you call it. And then there are individual, <laughs> like, um, or we have Friends of the Library in some of our branch libraries as well. So if you live in any of our branch communities, many of those libraries have Friends of the Library as well. And something else, in our last minute and a half we have going on, we are adding a branch in Brooklyn in the spring. So we will have eight branches of the library instead wow. of just seven. I'm sure this, our residents will love, love, love that. So that's something that they're working on. Um, and spring 2019, there will be a new library in town. So now you're going to be even more booked and busy connecting with uh, residents there and everyone else that you already connect with. <laughs> exactly. So we're excited. It's a great um it's a great thing to happen. Um, I know that the many residents in the Brooklyn area have been wanting it for a while. Okay. And if we can serve another population, 
Um, I know many already come and use the library and we encourage that as well because our branch libraries, while they do great programming, they don't, don't do the magnitude that we do. Anyone from any area, even if you don't live in our service area, you are welcome anytime. All right. And again, um, if someone would like to book you off for an event, how can they reach out to they you? They can call the library at 935-5133 and get directed to the correct department. Okay. So please, if you have an upcoming event, you want to encourage literacy, reach out to the public library, Miss Brandy, Miss Latanya, and whoever else will be happy to come out and visit and set up a table and talk with you and get you signed up for a library card. Please exactly. Get your library card. Merry Christmas. Get a library card. <laughs> all right. So thank you all for tuning in to Community Conversations on this Tuesday. Please, everyone, stay dry and stay warm. It is cold outside today. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily